What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So guess what, on the video today, I actually had a special request. So uh, I had a question on Instagram and it was from Melissa. And Melissa asked, uh, she said, love everything that you do. I was wondering, would you be so kind of showing us how to cut layers on shoulder length hair? Thanks for your time. So, so Melissa's question kind of uh, sparked a little bit of an idea. So I wanna create a segment where I just kind of take your questions and I create a whole video based on that question because you gotta assume that if Melissa has this question then a lot of other people have it as well. So she wants to see medium length layered haircut. So what I did was I did a medium length layered haircut. It's gonna be about shoulder length. A lot of movement in the layering. It's gonna be rounded layers, kind of pushed off the face. And then we also, uh, in this video, do a curtain fringe as well. Also as a bonus on this video, I'm gonna show you guys at the end, we're gonna do a hair color uh, experiment. So I wanna show you guys that as well. So stay tuned after the haircut to see the finished product, the finished result with our hair color as well. Thank you to Paul Mitchell. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel or on Instagram, make sure you follow us at Free Salon Education or hit that subscribe button right here on YouTube. All right guys, let's get started with the video. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start off today's video by taking a center parting. So we're just gonna work our way right down to the crown and then I'm gonna find where the head starts to curve right in the fringe area. And that's where I'm gonna draw my triangle, right straight down the hairline. So notice I look for that hairline because I'm looking to work with similar density throughout the entire cut. I twist up that triangle, clip it out of the way. That's literally gonna be the only section that we really take throughout this whole cut. So it's gonna be pretty simple in that uh, aspect. So. Now I'm gonna add in uh, Paul Mitchell Neuro Prime. It's a nice uh, blow dry primer. It's got a nice medium light hold. Uh, I put it in the hair, it helps protect it from heat. So I'll put it in there, it helps control the hair while I cut it and then it helps with uh, protecting the hair when I blow it dry. So to start this haircut off, we're gonna work on the left-hand side of the head. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way back this entire section until I get to where the hairline starts to drop into the nape, into the back of the head, right behind the ear. So uh, working off the curve of the head, I really wanna create almost a concave feel to the sides of the cut. Nice short layers, um, skinnying up the bottom, and just creating layers that really fall nice around the ear, and then uh, remove that weight from around the sides. I'm also taking some density away from the outer perimeter of the cut, which we're gonna cut at the very end. So a um, few different techniques we're gonna throw into this, and uh, things I think you'll find very valuable in the salon as you're working. So notice, I didn't start this haircut by cutting the length. I'm really working on the interior shape first. So everything's getting elevated up. I'm gonna create layers that push off of the face. The way that you do that is you cut the hair towards the face. So I'm over directing everything over that very first section. So it becomes a stationary guide, uh, taking vertical partings and pushing the hair. You can see I'm pushing it right over top of that first uh, parting that I took, that first section that I took. So everything's going to, to section one. I'll continue that cut all the way back to just behind the ear where that hairline starts to drop. That's where I'm gonna change things up. So notice, I'm going back to that point. That's because the density is all the same in that section. It's really important uh, as hairdressers and those of you guys that are getting more into advanced hair cutting or even in school, just to understand the different densities that you're working with in the hair. What is the formation of the hair? How much hair are you working with? Where, how does the hairline uh, flow? Because when you look at the hairline, that's gonna determine uh, the outer perimeter of that cut and kind of the density throughout it. So. The sides, I'm cutting both the same. So now we're working on the right hand side. The only difference is you always wanna free up that bottom, that elbow, uh, when you're cutting concave shapes. So I'm standing in front of the head, pulling everything to me, uh, which tends to be a little bit easier anyways because you're pulling it towards yourself. Uh, anytime you're pushing away, it gets a little bit harder to stay consistent. So notice it's just a straight line across. Somebody in the comments is gonna say something about me wearing black clothes and dark hair. Uh, it's okay, look at my fingers, look at the angle. You can still see the hair if you look at it. There's a couple highlights that pop through in there. But uh, just look at my finger angle. That's what you need to be judging. That's the most important part. You can see my hands very clearly in this video. So all the way parallel to the floor is how my fingers are working across. That's the cutting line that we're creating. So I go all the way back to where that hairline starts to drop in the back, and that's where I'm gonna stop on the sides. So because I'm over directing everything to the front, 
all of those layers are starting to get longer towards the back and that's really the goal. Uh, you also have to look at the head shape. The head shape is curving a lot in the back of the head. So it curves not only in the crown area but then around the occipital bone as well. So I'm now not going to cut concave and I'm going to work just a straight line still parallel with the floor uh, across and I'm going to cut square, more square layers or balanced layers in the back. So my guide is now going to be traveling. It's not going to be stationary. So I'm going to cut my first section and then I'm going to work my way across that way. So you'll see everything's over directed straight up and we're going to hit the over top angle. So you can see that everything's just coming back to that previous section. So we're traveling across the back of the head, creating a balanced line uh, horizontally and vertically. See, I grab a little bit of the old and then bring in the new. I'm working my way all the way over to that hairline. Everything coming straight up, parallel to the floor, straight up in the air. Now, if I had a guest that had a higher density of hair and I really wanted to remove some extra weight, I could even shift my finger angle even a little bit more in this and cut more concave layers in the back. Uh, that would take out some more weight. If she had high density, then maybe I would go in with some point cutting uh, instead of cutting a blunt line. That tends to take out a little bit more weight. So there's different options based on the density of your client's hair. But in this last section, you'll notice there wasn't anything to cut. So I move on. Now we're gonna go into the fringe. So what I wanted to do is cut a nice open kind of curtain fringe, uh, if you if you wanna call it that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with a little bit of elevation. I'm gonna work with vertical partings. Uh, one little tip, and this is something I learned from uh, Richard Manna, I believe. Um, he cuts the length. So notice that I'm checking where I want my guide to be. Then I have a ton of hair. So what I'm gonna do is cut the bulk of it off first. Then I'm gonna go in and point cut a line. And I'll show you guys uh, that again so you can see it. But I go in and I point cut because I wanna create a nice soft feel. So I cut the blunt line for my length. Then I go in with point cutting, a little bit of deeper point cutting, but here's the tip right here. So as I comb the hair over, I've got a lot of hair in my hand. So in order to control it, I cut the bulk of it off first. I don't go all the way to the guide. I can still see my guide underneath. And then I go in and I point cut that length to match my guide. So what that's doing is just allowing me to control the hair a little bit better. I thought that was such a cool tip. Um, anytime I'm around a different hairdresser that I haven't worked with before, I always try to grab something from them that I can bring into what I do. Uh, and that was one thing that I really uh, thought was cool is just being able to control that hair because sometimes when we're hairdressers and we go in to cut that long hair that's over our fingers, it's challenging and it gets in the way. So just take that bulk off, then go in and cut your lines uh, however you would like. So the last bit, uh, I wanted this to be a medium length haircut. So we cut some shorter layers in there, cut the interior part. And now we're going in cutting the exterior, the perimeter line. I wanted it to be a little bit more of a blunt feel, a uh, nice solid line. So I'm just cu cutting everything at that one length and the layers will kind of come to life from there. So cutting off, uh, making sure all the hair looks nice and healthy as we work through it. And this is a great uh, medium length cut for your guest. So now uh, I'm gonna blow it dry. I'm gonna use Paul Mitchell Lift. Um, we're gonna do some color real quick too because what I wanted to do is I wanted to play around with, Paul Mitchell sent me their new uh, VG series. I used it in a past video to make a blonde, but they have a level five. And I was like, well, if it's a violet gold, then what does it look like at a level five? So I um, thought I'd put this all over the head and get a really nice idea for what that tone looks like. Thought you guys might find that interesting as well. Uh, so we're gonna deepen her to a level five. Now, uh, definitely one thing that I've noticed about this color is that it's got like kind of an iridescent feel. So uh, when it hits the light, you get different shades from it. Um, it's, it's a VG, which you would think is violet gold, but it's a neutral base. So with a violet uh, kind of overcast. So I really love the violet tones that come through on it. You're going to see it in the end result. But that was kind of one of my favorite things about this color because you're always looking for a nice violet, but that looks natural. 
um, that kind of has that natural undertone to it. And a lot of them are kind of fantasy color looking. So this one to me just has that violet hue, that richness to it, but still violet, uh, which I really, really love. And I think you guys will love in the salon as well. So uh, check that out on paulmitchell.com. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys like the cut. You can see the layers. You can see the, uh, the opened up curtain face frame uh, fringe. I uh, hope you guys like it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, on free salon education, everything, and also our Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to share another video with you guys. It'll be coming soon. Thanks.